Good morning. It's uh, Vaughan actually, just about afternoon now, about one o'clock I think. Yeah, later than that. Anyway, um, I'm going to do a video uh, and it's going to be on five weights of clay, which are 180 grams, which is six and a half ounces, 260 grams, which is nine ounces, 315 grams, which is 11 ounces, uh, 360 grams, which is 13 ounces, and 460 grams, which is 16 ounces. I'm gonna throw a cylinder coffee mug with each, measure them, show you how what you can get. And uh, so as you're uh, practicing, as you know, you get better with practice, but you'll have a goal of what you can get from a certain size lump of clay with a coffee mug. Because we're always putting too much clay on the wheel or too little clay for what we wanna get. So I think this will be a good test. Let me put some light on it here I got. So it might be a little nicer, it's a bit extra light. Um, I'm Vaughan Smith, West Coast Bell Pottery in Nova Scotia, uh, in the eastern shore of Canada. All right, so here we go. The wheel I'm throwing on is a Brent CXC, so it has a little noise to it because it's 30 odd years old. And it's B-Mix Cone 5 clay. All right, start with the little one. Now let's get the camera right down so you can see what's gonna happen. So I can splash the camera, probably. Let that stick out of the way. I think that'll give you a good view. All right. So this is the tiny one. It's 180 grams, which is six and a half ounces. I'm assuming you know how to throw with this video. If not, you can go back to earlier videos of mine to get the gist of how you're throwing. Proportions are good with, you know, any lump of clay for a coffee mug, so you've got to kind of judge the width compared to the height. You don't want to have a, tiny, a very wide, tiny coffee mug, otherwise things get cold quickly. So a coffee mug opening determines if a mug coffee is going to get cold fast. So I, I judge the width on what I think the height will be. Usually I get what I'm after in two pulls, sometimes three, but mostly it's two pulls for smaller pieces. Put the foot on with the rib like this underneath. My finger's just above the rib, so it gives a little edge there, but I always turn it over and refine that foot so I don't have to trim. Finish it up with the metal rib So this you would call like a little espresso mug, I guess. Don't need a sponge on a stick since the sponge will reach the bottom. And this plate is very smooth, so all I'm doing is rubbing the sponge across the rim. This is almost a porcelain style clay. All right, what do we have? I don't want to get my tape roll too dirty. It's not going to slip out of my hand either. Okay, it is three, I think that says three and a quarter. Yep, it's three and a quarter inches high. And the opening is two and a half inches across. So that's the first one. Then to take it off very slowly with some water on the wheel, just pull the wire through. I'm going to spray all of these black and carve them. Then you start the next one, dry the wheel but leave a little bit of clay on. The next one is 260 grams. I've got it written on the clay, which is nine, uh, what is that one? Nine ounces. So this is just about half a pound of clay. Kind of moving the clay around to, to sort of find that point where you feel like it centers. 
leave about a half a centimeter just over at the bottom. I always use my fingernail in the corner just to pull my finger back to the center. You've seen me do that in other videos. It compresses the base. Push in with your outer fingers and your inner fingers push back just a little bit. Get water to dribble down the inside and the outside at the same point. And then push again with the outer fingers and push back with the inner fingers, but not enough to make it wider too much. You want to get height rather than width. Do the foot. So it's a wedge underneath the piece and then this one just gives you a, a refined edge at the above. And then if it's still moist on the inside, you can do the rib thing. But if it's a bit dry on the inside, you always have to add some more water at this point. But this is still smooth enough and soft enough. So it's still smooth. I might not be able to reach the bottom, so I'm going to use the sponge on the stick. This was a big sponge for these pieces. I might use my other sponge on the stick for the next ones. Although the next ones will be wider. So what did we get with this one? Width-wise, it's two and seven eighths inches across. And four and a quarter inches high. We can work the grams out later. It's not, not the grams, the centimeters. And there you see I didn't rotate the wheel, but it pulls off easily on its own anyway. All right. Proportions, remember, are important. So judge the width, depending on what you think you can get with the height. All right, the next one is 11 ounces of clay, which is 315 grams. I'm asked all the time by customers to make mugs a certain height and specifically they love a handle a certain size. People will tell me how many fingers they have to be able to get inside the handle to feel comfortable. So this will be a good video for me as well as you to actually give me a reference on what size of lump of clay I need to get for a certain mug that somebody wants. Don't you love these bats that just knock? I know how to get rid of it, but it never bothers me, so I just do it. I put my little finger down onto the bat while I'm pulling up and it stops it knocking. And then when I have to lift my little finger off, which is now, if I'm not putting too much pressure on it, won't do the knocking anyway. That, I feel like, is a little narrow at the top, so I might widen it a bit when I do the metal rib pull. Okay, wet my hand with this one because it's a long way down. So I'm widening it a little bit for proportions. So now the sponge on the stick will go in easier too because it's actually wide enough. Yeah, how many mugs can you get from a bag of clay? I mean, there's a dollar business side of this too when you're making the pottery form you want to make sure you're making a profit doing it all right what did we get this time go back a little bit three and a quarter by four and three quarters
right, that's number three. Dry the wheel, leave a bit of clay on the middle so the next one is easy to stick to. This one is 360 grams, which is 13 ounces. Talking about three quarters of a pound, just about with this one, just over. Water right down the center of the rim so it goes to the inside and the outside. I can still get the height I need with two poles on this one. The clay is getting bigger though. Wet my hand on the inside again because it's getting larger. Yeah, so I'm going to carve all these in this graffito technique. I'm going to make probably about 30 coffee mugs here. My wife and I are going to be carving. She only wants 10 to carve, but I'll do the rest. So I'll do a video of carving them. I can do the super fast videos for those. Makes me look like I'm on speed or something when I do those. They take me forever to carve and then it only takes 20 seconds in a video. There you go. So what do we get this time? Let's get that rough bit off the bottom. Top first, three and a half inches across. It's getting slippery to hold this, so don't want to drop it on the pot. Five inches high. There we go. Yeah, it's a miserable day in Nova Scotia today. Totally fogged in, cloud, but it's 10 degrees on December 13th. That's 10 degrees centigrade. And the last one. What do we have here? 460 grams at 16 ounces, one full pound. This is the largest I would use for a, a coffee mug. After this, I don't call it a coffee mug anymore. I would start calling them tankards or large soup bowls and things like that. Because this will hold a pint by the time I finished it. I think I'll need three poles with this one. So bad maybe I can stay with the two poles. I could probably get a little extra height from the bottom there because it's definitely a little thicker down there. Wet it on the inside again because I'm trying to not catch it because bigger poles mean you're dragging with more pressure and more water off the clay.
All right, that is the last one. I've always wanted to do something like this for myself because you know I get asked all the time. So a lot of time when I'm doing mugs for somebody, I'll make a bunch. Like she wants three or four, I'll say I'll make eight just so I can get the one they want. Because I know the first one I'm going to throw is not going to be the right height or width. So this will be a very useful video. Let's wipe my hand off a little bit. All right, what do we have now? Three and a half inches across. That's a good size width anyway for a coffee mug because you don't want to get them too wide at the top, otherwise the drink cools off. And it is five and, I would say, five-eighths high. Five and five-eighths high. Maybe five and three-quarters, we'll say. It's closer to that. Five and three-quarters. And we'll record these as they're being fired as well, just to show you the height that they will shrink. So isn't that going to be useful too? All right, I'm going to wipe my hands off so I can change the camera so we can look at these together. Ooh. All righty. Every time I do one of these videos, I feel really guilty because I feel like I have to clean my studio up. Otherwise, you'll think I'm a slob. And um, But then I realize we're all potters, so we all like playing in dirt and mud anyway. But anyway, keep your studio clean because the dust is harmful. All right, what do we have? Okay, these are the five. All right, so that I think will be a very useful video for people who have to do production or even just one or two pieces. And I'll, I'll do another record video, recording video of what they end up after the firing. So we'll get the height of those two. And I'll write it in the comments or I'll, or I'll put a, a short couple of minute video on it. All righty, B-Mix Clay Cone 5 on a Brent wheel. Every piece was just two poles. All right, so this is an interesting experiment for myself too. So from sort of cloudy, kind of dreary, but still really pretty fantastic looking over the ocean. This is Vaughn Smith. Actually, I should show you that. I haven't said that. I really should let you see it. But, um, oh, here we go. Here's what it looks like. Cloudy and gray. Battleship Grey, all right. All righty, so have fun, stay safe, and get through this COVID stuff, all right. Thanks very much for joining me in Nova Scotia. Bye-bye.